quick question before we get started with the show. Do you order lab tests from companies like Dutch, DSL, Genova, or Vibrant America? Hi, I'm Dr. Carrie Jones, Head of Medical Education at Rupa Health, the absolute best place to order, manage, track, and get results from 30 plus lab companies all in one place. Practitioners using Rupa Health are saving well over 15 hours of admin time each week for their lab ordering process. With just a few clicks, you can order from 30 plus lab companies, that's over 3,000 tests for free in one single portal. That means one invoice for all labs paid online up front. Plus, patients get practitioner pricing and receive full patient support through easier personalized collection instructions, automated follow-ups, super bills, answers to testing questions, and so much more. Go to rupahealth.com to sign up for your free account today. Now, let's start the show. Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our host for Redefining Medicine is Dr. Erica Schwartz. For more than 20 years, Dr. Erica has been at the forefront of advanced patient care, taking the best from conventional and integrative medicine and applying them to prevent disease. Dr. Erica is a distinguished AFRM faculty member in disciplines ranging from hormone therapy, peptide therapy, and IV nutritional support. Hi, welcome to Redefining Medicine. I am Dr. Erica Schwartz, and I'm your host. Today, we have Dr. Joseph Maroon with us, and Dr. Maroon is here to share with me a lot of insights. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Maroon. Thank you, Eric. You can introduce me anytime. Uh, uh, it'd be my pleasure. <laughs> I'll take it. I've been, I've been associated with the A4M for over 25 years. So I go way back, and the way it has grown and evolved is absolutely astounding. So how do you think A4M has evolved? How did we get to being really the premier education? Yeah, I, 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 think, the gap? I, I think it's everything, every organization is about people. Right. And, and I think the people involved have selected and gradually cultivated scientists from many, many universities across the country and world so that they're bringing their research interests, their clinical exposure, their clinical observations to the broad spectrum of participants here who really are interested in preventive medicine. Do you think that there is a significant change in, in healthcare in general? Uh, Do you think that A4M, you know, was over was it the out, you know, the outsider? Yeah that now A4M is actually becoming the centerpiece yeah. of it? Well, I mean, initially, you know, Hippocrates said the first responsibility of a physician is to prevent disease. Right. That be impossible to cure it, and that to be impossible to relieve pain. So we both know what 99% of physicians have been doing for many decades. And they still do it. Trying to fix cars after they're broken. Horrible. And uh, relieve pain. Right. So I, I think as the premier organization for preventive medicine, and we're now we're talking about personalized medicine, uh, the A4M has taken a, a, its dutiful place, so to speak, uh, for physicians where they come here to learn about the best way to take care of themselves as well as their patients. I agree, and you as a board member have watched the transition. Yeah, I've been, I've been, it's been exciting. And where do you see it going from here? No, I think it's going to continue to enlarge and grow and, and attract the, the physicians who are more holistic in their approach to medicine, who are more critical in terms of uh, the pharmaceutical industry and the way drugs are 
promoted and uh, um, and more more objective about the way we approach our our patients. Hopefully, still with empathy and Care. kindness that we all grew up expecting for ourselves. Right. I think it's like we went from caring. Physician was the caring member of the family, I want to say, I don't know, in the 50s, I guess, 1950s, to where we went to subspecialists, and it became subspecialty. And you're a neurosurgeon, so that's really subspecialized. And then we lost the thread, which is the care well, of the patient. Well, we, we can discuss ad infinitum the way hospitals have changed, insurance has changed, right. patient expectations have changed. Uh, all of this flotsam in the river has created <laughs> a morass for patients. I mean, if you, unless you know someone who can assist you through the healthcare system. Right. Have it, an advocate. It, you need an advocate yep. and it can be entirely uh, very laborious, painful and harmful. Yeah, and we see it all the time. Yeah. And it's the conventional world that's the education. And I was on the board of one of the medical schools in New York. And eventually I left because there's nothing you can do because the mindset is still there. And I believe in like we have to bridge that gap to bring them to where we have gotten at A4M. But I think that you need, like what you said, like as a, you need a quarterback, which brings me to your ring. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is, I, uh, I, I would like, what do I have to do to wear that ring? <laughs> well, you have to do quite a bit, actually. Tell us, <laughs> tell me, tell me. No, this is a tell Super us. Bowl ring uh, for the Steelers when we played Arizona. And uh, it was you a won. great, great victory. We won. And unfortunately, we've, Kind of slipped a bit this year, but uh, oh, let's look at the positives. But Forget it, it's about that. It's been fun, and it's been. Wait, I've been with the Steelers for right. over thirty-five years, and they must adore you. I wouldn't go that far. This I would. Sometimes when I tell them they can't play, they don't like it at all. But they should but, listen. But it, it's been. I, I've worked with Coach Knoll, um, and Coach Tomlin, Bill Cower, all three Super Bowl coaches. Amazing. So I've been. Very blessed. But you're a blessing yourself. Oh, thank you. So that's the truth. And as a blessing, you have something else to talk about, which is well, what are you talking about tomorrow at the lecture, your lecture? Yes, I've been invited to talk about hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And why did you choose to talk about it? An excellent question. Um, <laughs> you know, we have at the University of Pittsburgh the largest concussion clinic in the country. Mm -hmm. We I've see, sent a patient once there. We see over 7,000 new patients a year with concussions and have seven neuropsychologists who see nothing but kids and patients with concussions. Most of them respond to the ocular vestibular and the training that we give. There's a small subset that doesn't. Mm -hmm. They have prolonged post-concussion syndrome, headaches, visual abnormalities, emotional disturbances, can't process information. And a small cohort of those I've sent for hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And the mothers would come back and say, you've given me my child back, or you're giving me my son back. And it, it really whetted my own interest in that topic and what's it all about and the physiology of hyperbaric medicine. And uh, a year and a half ago, I. I went to the Aviv Clinic in Florida, to, in, in the villages in Florida, and it's the only institution like it outside of Tel Aviv and Dubai. And it's a hyperbaric oxygen facility, but it's a, a total care facility in terms of physical therapy, neurocognitive training, dietary management. And I spent three months doing that. Three months? And I had... That must have been really important I, to you. I had, well, I wanted to do a study on myself. Of course. It's uh, got to be personal. And uh, <clears throat> my, you know, getting to be where I am in age, uh, my memory isn't about? quite as good as it was in the past. 
and I'm a little slower in terms of my competitive pursuits. Mm. So well, I measure... stop one second. <laughs> Your competitive pursuits are another topic to address. <laughs> so talk to me for one second about when you're saying slower, you're comparing yourself to super athletes. <laughs> you're not comparing yourself to the average human being well, because you've I've, been... I've, I've, I've competed in triathlons for the last 35 years or so, and I've competed in Hawaii five times as the, the Hawaiian Ironman triathlon. Amazing. And... Uh, so I'm... Why are you so humble? Well, it's not humble. I, I used to do <laughs> Ironman races. Now I'm doing Tin Man races. So, so. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I think that's great. But anyway. You're, you're so humble. You're amazing. I, uh, I, but I, obviously, I'm slowing down. What right. do you mean, so, obviously? We're just talking about longevity here yeah. and how we're never going to get old and that well, the health span is expanding and you're proof positive that it's true. Well... There, there are important things, diet, exercise, avoiding environmental toxins, and controlling stress, Right. as well as getting adequate sleep. Those five things mm -hmm. are the best things you can do to prevent Alzheimer's disease. And, and you know, right. I tell people, I want to die young as late as possible. I'm with you 100%. And anyway, that's what I, I'm aware of those those factors and the physiology. So that's it. how you went to the hyperbaric chamber. So I went thing. to the hyperbaric chamber because I wanted to investigate the therapeutic applications of this, not only for traumatic brain injury, but also for stroke and for neurodegenerative diseases uh, and, and also possibly for COVID. So I... I did a series of biomarker evaluations on myself. I had, so what were the biomarkers you used? I had a two-hour neurocognitive evaluation with a trained neuropsychologist. Mm -hmm. And I had imaging done with MRI of my brain with BOLD and DTI tractography. Mm -hmm. I had a spec scan, mm -hmm. measured my did telomeres. Did a functional MRI? No, did not no do functional. functional. Okay. But the spec scan mm -hmm. and did measure my telomeres. Mm -hmm. Then I did pretty intense cardio pulmonary evaluation on a treadmill to exhaustion. Mm -hmm. Bruce protocol. Right. And uh, and then I I did 60, 60 dives at two hours a day. Two hours a Two day. Two hours a day in a multi-place chamber. And, uh, and I also did a triathlon beforehand. <laughs> and by the way, I did a triathlon. I got that. <laughs> by the way. And? So then I went through the dives and I repeated all the tests. Of course. After the, yeah. After Afterwards. The, and what did they I, was, show? I was pleasantly surprised. There were <laughs> improvements in, in virtually all of the modalities. My my brain speed, my processing of information, my memory, all were improved, not dramatically, three to five percent. But that's but, significant. But, but significant. Right. Uh, my, my brain scans were very interesting in that they showed enhanced blood flow specifically in those areas on my brain with the Broadman map Mm -hmm. which correlates function with location, the brain flow improved in those areas that I improved in neurocognitively. Amazing. It is amazing. That's amazing. That's actually really amazing. My telomeres right. what happened also to them? enlarged by 100%. They like that. Incredible. 100%? 100%. I don't know what that means. I mean, I, I can show you the pictures. Right. But I want to see it, the it, pictures, it shows, yes. Uh, they, they enlarged by 100%. And I didn't know if that meant I went from 80 in age to 40. But who cares? It, it's <laughs> physiologic. It's not <laughs> chronologic, so it doesn't matter. Anyway. And then, uh, but I, I, again, very interesting. I, I improved in my treadmill test by about 10%. Amazing. For you, nine and a half to ten percent, and my triathlon time before and after was reduced by ten percent. Interesting. I took 
15, 20 minutes off of my race Not before serious. and after, which was 10%. Not serious. So I published this, actually. It was accepted to a journal, uh, a good journal, actually. Tell us. Uh, Progress in, or Frontiers in Neurology. Right. That's a huge journal. And uh, so it was accepted for publication. And, and then I delved into it even more. The scientists in Tel Aviv and now in Aviv in the villages have published several, several landmark papers showing in controlled, some randomized studies that HBOT, HBOT, increases all of those, in, improves PTSD, number one, mm -hmm. which was my first getting into it post-traumatic stress yes, disorder, right. and also uh, post-concussion syndrome, number one. Number two, uh, they've also published data, good papers showing the improvement in stroke patients up to five to eight years after a stroke. Amazing. And they've published just last month a paper on COVID, show in long COVID, right. showing substantial improvement with long COVID, neurocognitively, and also with cerebral blood flow in the same kind of tests that I had. So uh, all, I think, very cutting edge, very, uh, very important. Important, yeah. Very important in terms of patients with some intractable problems who have nowhere else to turn. Right, and with something that's non-invasive. And non-invasive. Is it expensive? It is expensive. You know, it's mm -hmm. any place from thirty to forty-five thousand dollars for six months. But look at the results. Uh, but in terms of, you know, I've seen patients with post-concussion syndrome eat up thirty-five or forty thousand dollars in prescription meds that meds. make them worse. MPT. Uh, yeah. Right. And and uh, so. Uh, hopefully, Sounds amazing. Hopefully, the price can be dropped and it can become available, uh, much more readily available. It will be dropped because this, as the need for it and the yeah. you know um, the therapeutic use of value it, right, goes up. Once that, it's recognized, that's right. So and if somebody has a hemiparis and aphasia, you know how much is that worth? to be everything. able to get some, I would even, think everything. some even small improvement. Of course, I would think everything. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. I want to read the paper. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, you're an inspiration to all. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming, well, and thank you for sharing with us. And I'm honored to have been able to speak to you it's today. It's my pleasure to thank be you. here with you. Thank, thank you. you. Good.